The time signature also known as meter signature, meter signature, or measure signature is a notational convention used in Western musical notation to specify how many beats pulses are contained in each measure bar, and which note value is equivalent to a beat. In a music score, the time signature appears at the beginning as a time symbol or stacked numerals, such as OR 34 read common time and 3-4 time, respectively, immediately following the key signature or immediately following the clef symbol if the key signature is empty. A mid-score time signature, usually immediately following a barline, indicates a change of meter. There are various types of time signatures, depending on whether the music follows regular or symmetrical beat patterns, including simple e.g., 34 and 44, and compound e.g., 98 and 128, or involves shifting beat patterns, including complex e.g., 54 or 78, mixed e.g., 58 and 38 or 68 and 34, additive e.g., 3 plus 2 plus 38, fractional e.g., 2 and a 24th, and irrational meters e.g g 310 or 524 topic <inaudible> frequently used time signatures equals 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 simple verses compound equals 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 topic simple Simple time signatures consist of two numerals, one stacked above the other. The lower numeral indicates the note value that represents one beat, the beat unit. This number is typically a power of two. The upper numeral indicates how many such beats constitute a bar, for instance, 24 means two-quarter note crotchet beats per bar, while 38 means three-eighth note quaver beats per bar. The most common simple time signatures are 24, 34, and 44. By convention, two special symbols are sometimes used for 44 and 22. The symbol is sometimes used for 44 time, also called common time or imperfect time. The symbol is derived from a broken circle used in music notation from the 14th through 16th centuries, where a full circle represented what today would be written in 32 or 34 time, and was called tempus perfectum perfect time. See mensural time signatures below. The symbol is also a carryover from the notational practice of late medieval and Renaissance music, where it signified tempus imperfectum diminutum diminished imperfect time, more precisely, a doubling of the speed, or proportio dupla, in duple meter. In modern notation, it is used in place of 22 and is called a la brieve or, colloquially, cut time or cut common time. Topic. Compound. In compound meter, subdivisions which are what the upper number represents in these meters of the beat are in three equal parts, so that a dotted note half again longer than a regular note becomes the beat. The upper numeral of compound time signatures is commonly 3, 6, 9, or 12 multiples of 3 in each beat. The lower number is most commonly an 8 an eighth note or quaver, as in 98 or 128. Topic. Examples In the examples below, bold denotes a more stressed beat, and italics denotes a less stressed beat. Simple, the meter 34 is a simple time signature that represents three quarter notes crotchets. It is felt as 34, 1 and 2 and 3 and Compound, in principle, 68 comprises not three groups of two eighth notes quavers, but two groups of three eighth note quaver subdivisions. It is felt as 68, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These examples assume, for simplicity, that continuous eighth notes are the prevailing note values. The rhythm of actual music is typically not as regular. Topic. Duple, triple, etc. Time signatures indicating two beats per bar whether in simple or compound meter are called duple meter, while those with three beats to the bar are triple meter. Terms such as quadruple four, quintuple five, and so on, are also occasionally used. Topic. Beating time signatures To the ear, a bar may seem like one singular beat. 
For example, a fast waltz, notated in 34 time, may be described as being one in a bar. Correspondingly, at slow tempos, the beat indicated by the time signature could in actual performance be divided into smaller units. On a formal mathematical level, the time signatures of, e.g., 34 and 38 are interchangeable. In a sense, all simple triple time signatures, such as 38, 34, 32, etc., and all compound duple times, such as 68, 616 and so on, are equivalent. A piece in 34 can be easily rewritten in 38, simply by having the length of the notes. Other time signature rewritings are possible, most commonly a simple time signature with triplets translates into a compound meter. Though formally interchangeable, for a composer or performing musician, by convention, different time signatures often have different connotations. First, a smaller note value in the beat unit implies a more complex notation, which can affect ease of performance. Second, beaming affects the choice of actual beat divisions. It is, for example, more natural to use the quarter note, crotchet as a beat unit in 64 or 22 than the 8, quaver in 68 or 24. Third, time signatures are traditionally associated with different music styles. It might seem strange to notate a rock tune in 48 or 42. Topic. Characteristics The table below shows the characteristics of the most frequently used time signatures. Topic. Complex time signatures Signatures that do not fit the usual duple or triple categories are called complex, asymmetric, irregular, unusual, or odd though these are broad terms, and usually a more specific description is appropriate. The term odd meter, however, sometimes describes time signatures in which the upper number is simply odd rather than even, including 34 and 98. The irregular meters not fitting duple or triple categories are common in some non-Western music, but rarely appeared in formal written Western music until the 19th century. Early anomalous examples appeared in Spain between 1516 and 1520, but the Delphic hymns to Apollo, one by Athenaeus, is entirely in quintuple meter, the other by Lamenius predominantly so, carved on the exterior walls of the Athenian treasury at Delphi in 128 BC are in the relatively common credit meter, with five beats to a foot. The third movement of Frederic Chopin's Piano Sonata No. 1 is an early, but by no means the earliest, example of 54 time in solo piano music music. Anton Rijka's Fugue No. 20 from his 36 Fugues, published in 1803, is also for piano and is in 58. The waltz-like second movement of Tchaikovsky's Pathétique Symphony shown below, often described as a limping waltz, is a notable example of 54 time in orchestral music. Examples from 20th century classical music include Gustav Holst's Mars, the Bringer of War, and Neptune, the Mystic, from the planets, both in 54. Paul Hindemith's Fuga Secunda, in G from Ludus Tonalis, 58. The ending of Stravinsky's The Firebird, 74. The fugue from Hyder Villa Lobos's Bachianas Brasileiras No. 9, 118. The themes for the mission, impossible television series by Lalo Schifrin in 54, and for Room 222 by Jerry Goldsmith in 74. In the Western popular music tradition, unusual time signatures occur as well, with progressive rock in particular making frequent use of them. The use of shifting meters in the Beatles' Strawberry Fields Forever, and the use of quintuple meter in their Within You, Without You, are well-known examples, as is Radiohead's. Paranoid Android includes 78. Paul Desmond's jazz composition, Take 5, in 54 time, was one of a number of irregular meter compositions that the Dave Brubeck Quartet played. They played other compositions in 114, 11 4, 74, Unsquare Dance, and 98, Blue Rondo a la Turk, expressed as 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 38. This last is an example of a work in a signature that, despite appearing merely compound triple, is actually more complex. Brubeck's title refers to the characteristic axic meter of the Turkish Karsalama dance, however, such time signatures are only unusual in most Western music. Traditional music of the Balkans uses such meters extensively. 
Bulgarian dances, for example, include forms with 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 22, 25 and other numbers of beats per measure. These rhythms are notated as additive rhythms based on simple units, usually 2, 3 and 4 beats, though the notation fails to describe the metric time bending taking place, or compound meters. See additive meters below. Some video samples are shown below. Topic. Mixed meters While time signatures usually express a regular pattern of beat stresses continuing through a piece or at least a section, sometimes composers place a different time signature at the beginning of each bar, resulting in music with an extremely irregular rhythmic feel. In this case, the time signatures are an aid to the performers and not necessarily an indication of meter. The promenade from Modest Mussorgsky's pictures at an exhibition 1874 is a good example. The opening measures are shown below. Igor Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring 1913 is famous for its savage rhythms. Five measures from Ritual Action of the Ancestors are shown below. In such cases, a convention that some composers follow e.g., Olivier Messiaen, in his La Nativité du Seigneur and Quatuor pour la fin du temps is to simply omit the time signature. Charles Ives's Concord Sonata has measure bars for select passages, but the majority of the work is unbarred. Some pieces have no time signature, as there is no discernible meter. This is sometimes known as free time. Sometimes one is provided usually 44 so that the performer finds the piece easier to read, and simply has free time written as a direction. Sometimes the word free is written downwards on the staff to indicate the piece is in free time. Eric Satie wrote many compositions that are ostensibly in free time but actually follow an unstated and unchanging simple time signature. Later composers used this device more effectively, writing music almost devoid of a discernibly regular pulse. If two time signatures alternate repeatedly, sometimes the two signatures are placed together at the beginning of the piece or section, as shown below. Topic. Additive meters To indicate more complex patterns of stresses, such as additive rhythms, more complex time signatures can be used. Additive meters have a pattern of beats that subdivide into smaller, irregular groups. Such meters are sometimes called imperfect, in contrast to perfect meters, in which the bar is first divided into equal units, for example, the time signature 3 plus 2 plus 38 means that there are eight quaver beats in the bar, divided as the first of a group of three eighth notes quavers that are stressed, then the first of a group of two, then first of a group of three again. The stress pattern is usually counted as 3 plus 2 plus 38, 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 this kind of time signature is commonly used to notate folk and non-Western types of music. In classical music, Bella Bartok and Olivier Messiaen have used such time signatures in their works. The first movement of Maurice Ravel's piano trio in A minor is written in 88, in which the beats are likewise subdivided into 3 plus 2 plus 3 to reflect Basque dance rhythms. Romanian musicologist Constantine Brailoiu had a special interest in compound time signatures, developed while studying the traditional music of certain regions in his country. While investigating the origins of such unusual meters, he learned that they were even more characteristic of the traditional music of neighboring peoples e.g., the Bulgarians. He suggested that such timings can be regarded as compounds of simple two-beat and three-beat meters, where an accent falls on every first beat, even though, for example in Bulgarian music, beat lengths of one, two, three, four are used in the metric description. In addition, when focused only on stressed beats, simple time signatures can count as beats in a slower, compound time. However, there are two different length beats in this resulting compound time, a one-half again longer than the short beat or conversely, the short beat is two-thirds the value of the long. This type of meter is called axic, the Turkish word for limping, impeded, jolting, or shaking, and is described as an irregular bichronic rhythm. 
A certain amount of confusion for Western musicians is inevitable, since a measure they would likely regard as 716, for example, is a three-beat measure in axic, with one long and two short beats with subdivisions of 2 plus 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3 plus 2, or 3 plus 2 plus 2. Folk music may make use of metric time bends, so that the proportions of the performed metric beat time lengths differ from the exact proportions indicated by the metric. Depending on playing style of the same meter, the time bend can vary from non existent to considerable. In the latter case, some musicologists may want to assign a different meter. For example, the Bulgarian tune, Eleno Mom, is written in one of three forms 1 7. <laughs> 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2, 2 1 3. 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3, or 3 1 2 equals 3 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3, but an actual performance e.g., Smithsonian Eleno Mom may be closer to 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3. The Macedonian 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 meter is even more complicated, with heavier time bends, and use of quadruples on the threes. The metric beat time proportions may vary with the speed that the tune is played. The Swedish Boda Polska, Polska from the parish Boda has a typical elongated second beat. In Western classical music, metric time bend is used in the performance of the Viennese waltz. Most Western music uses metric ratios of 2 to 1, 3 to 1, or 4 to 1, 2, 3 or 4 beat time signatures. In other words, integer ratios that make all beats equal in time length. So, relative to that, 3 to 2 and 4 to 3 ratios correspond to very distinctive metric rhythm profiles. Complex accentuation occurs in Western music, but as syncopation rather than as part of the metric accentuation, Breloyu borrowed a term from Turkish medieval music theory, axic. Such compound time signatures fall under the axic rhythm category that he introduced along with a couple more that should describe the rhythm figures in traditional music. The term Breloyu revived had moderate success worldwide, but in Eastern Europe it is still frequently used. However, axic rhythm figures occur not only in a few European countries, but on all continents, featuring various combinations of the two and three sequences. The longest are in Bulgaria. The shortest axic rhythm figures follow the five-beat timing, comprising a two and a three, or three and two. Some video samples are shown below. Topic. Irrational meters Irrational time signatures rarely non time signatures, are used for so-called irrational bar lengths, that have a denominator that is not a power of 2 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. These are based on beats expressed in terms of fractions of full beats in the prevailing tempo, for example 310 or 524. For example, where 44 implies a bar construction of four quarter parts of a whole note i.e., four quarter notes, 43 implies a bar construction of four third parts of it. These signatures are of utility only when juxtaposed with other signatures with varying denominators. A piece written entirely in 43, say, could be more legibly written out in 44. According to Brian Fernihau, metric modulation is a somewhat distant analogy to his own use of irrational time signatures as a sort of rhythmic dissonance. It is arguable whether the use of these signatures makes metric relationships clearer or more obscure to the musician. It is always possible to write a passage using non-irrational signatures by specifying a relationship between some note length in the previous bar and some other in the succeeding one. Sometimes, successive metric relationships between bars are so convoluted that the pure use of irrational signatures would quickly render the notation extremely hard to penetrate. Good examples, written entirely in conventional signatures with the aid of between bar specified metric relationships, occur a number of times in John Adams' opera Nixon in China, 1987, where the sole use of irrational signatures would quickly produce massive numerators and denominators. Historically, this device has been prefigured wherever composers wrote tuplets. For example, a 24 bars of three triplet crotchets could arguably be written as a bar of 36. 
Henry Cowell's piano piece Fabric 1920 employs separate divisions of the bar anything from 1 to 9 for the three contrapuntal parts, using a scheme of shaped noteheads to visually clarify the differences, but the pioneering of these signatures is largely due to Brian Fernihau, who says that he finds that such irrational measures serve as a useful buffer between local changes of event density and actual changes of bass tempo. Thomas Aids has also used them extensively. For example in Traced Overhead 1996, the second movement of which contains, among more conventional meters, bars in such signatures as 26, 914 and 524. A gradual process of diffusion into less rarefied musical circles seems underway. For example, John Picard's Eden, commissioned for the 2005 finals of the National Brass Band Championships of Great Britain contains bars of 310 and 712. Notationally, rather than using Cowell's elaborate series of notehead shapes, the same convention has been invoked as when normal tuplets are written, for example, one beat in 45 is written as a normal quarter note, four quarter notes complete the bar, but the whole bar lasts only four fifths of a reference whole note, and a beat one fifth of one or four fifths of a normal normal quarter note. This is notated in exactly the same way that one would write if one were writing the first four quarter notes of five quintuplet quarter notes. This article uses irrational in the music theory sense, not the mathematical sense, where an irrational number is one that cannot be written as a ratio of whole numbers. However, a few pieces from Conlon Nancaro's studies for player piano use numbers that are irrational in the mathematical sense. A piece contains a canon with a part augmented in the ratio square root 42 to 1 approximately 6.481. Another employs a ratio of pi. E some video samples are shown below. These video samples show two time signatures combined to make a polymeter, since 43, say, in isolation, is identical to 44. Variants. <inaudible> 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 Some composers have used fractional beats, for example, the time signature 2 and a 24th appears in Carlos Chávez's Piano Sonata No. 3 1928 IV, M. 1. Music educator Carl Orff proposed replacing the lower number of the time signature with an actual note image, as shown at right. This system eliminates the need for compound time signatures, which are confusing to beginners. While this notation has not been adopted by music publishers generally except in Orff's own compositions, it is used extensively in music education textbooks. Similarly, American composers George Crumb and Joseph Schwantner, among others, have used this system in many of their works. Another possibility is to extend the bar line where a time change is to take place above the top instrument's line in a score and to write the time signature there, and there only, saving the ink and effort that would have been spent writing it in each instrument's staff. Henrik Goretzky's Beatus Vier is an example of this. Alternatively, music in a large score sometimes has time signatures written as very long, thin numbers covering the whole height of the score rather than replicating it on each staff. This is an aid to the conductor, who can see signature changes more easily. <laughs> Early music usage Topic. Mentral time signatures In the 14th, 15th and 16th centuries, a period in which mentral notation was used, four basic mensuration signs determined the proportion between the two main units of rhythm. There were no measure or bar lines in music of this period. These signs, the ancestors of modern time signatures, indicate the ratio of duration between different note values. The relation between the breve and the semibreve was called tempus, and the relation between the semibreve and the minim was called prolatio. The breve and the semibreve use roughly the same symbols as our modern double whole note breve and whole note semibreve, but they were not limited to the same proportional values as are in use today. There are complicated rules concerning how a breve is sometimes three and sometimes two semibreves. Unlike modern notation, the duration ratios between these different values was not always 2 to 1, it could be either 2 to 1 or 3 to 1, and that is what, amongst other things, these mensuration signs indicated. A ratio of 3 to 1 was called complete, perhaps a reference to the trinity, and a ratio of 2 to 1 was called incomplete. 
A circle used as a mensuration sign indicated tempus perfectum a circle being a symbol of completeness, while an incomplete circle, resembling a letter C, indicated tempus imperfectum. Assuming the breve is a beat, this corresponds to the modern concepts of triple meter and duple meter, respectively. In either case, a dot in the center indicated prolatio perfecta compound meter while the absence of such a dot indicated prolatio imperfecta simple meter. A rough equivalence of these signs to modern meters would be corresponds to 98 meter corresponds to 34 meter corresponds to 68 meter corresponds to 24 meter nb in modern compound meters the beat is a dotted note value such as a dotted quarter because the ratios of the modern note value hierarchy are always 2 to 1 dotted notes were never used in this way in the menstrual period the main beat unit was always a simple undotted note value topic <laughs> proportions Another set of signs in menstrual notation specified the metric proportions of one section to another, similar to a metric modulation. A few common signs are shown Tempus imperfectum diminutum, 1 to 2 proportion, twice as fast Tempus perfectum diminutum, 1 to 2 proportion, twice as fast Or just proportio tripla, 1 to 3 proportion, three times as fast, similar to triplets, often the ratio was expressed as two numbers, one above the other, looking similar to a modern time signature, though it could have values such as 43, which a conventional time signature could not. Some proportional signs were not used consistently from one place or century to another. In addition, certain composers delighted in creating puzzle compositions that were intentionally difficult to decipher. In particular, when the sign was encountered, the tactus beat changed from the usual semibreve to the breve, a circumstance called a la breve. This term has been sustained to the present day, and though now it means the beat is a minim half note, in contradiction to the literal meaning of the phrase, it still indicates that the beat has changed to a longer note value. See also Shaffle Tala <laughs>